So hello and welcome to uh, this short video about what is version control and collaboration and why it is important. So the short definition of what version control and collaboration use case is, is that it is a set of features that allow any company to store safely, manage access and make changes to their IP. Um, in the case of GitLab, uh, that comprises a set of categories that most of them fall into the create stage. In fact, all the categories in the create stage are um, part of this use case, but not all of them. Uh, but, but not all of the categories are exclusive to the create stage. As you can see, there are several across other stages, manage, plan, package. Uh, and uh, on the far right column, you'll see a few uh, categories that are not even that belong to this use case that are not even part of any, any stage. So what the market is expecting from, from a tool that solves this, use case, solves this use case is a tool that enables their development teams to work in distributed mode and async, uh, that allows them to manage changes and versions of code and assets, uh, the ability to review and collaborate on code and those assets too, uh, the tracking of approvals of the proposed changes, uh, think of branches as proposed changes in the case of Git, and the ability to resolve the conflicts that may arise from the merge of those, um, of those uh, proposed changes. Um, so, all those capabilities on the left are solved partially, at least by the uh, categories on the right. So why is this not? Why is this use case not called uh, version uh, source code management? Then, well, there are several reasons for that. Uh, but um, the the one one of the main ones is that the fact that this use case covers more ground than only source code management. So source code management and code review, so the ability to manage source code and the workflows to uh, collaborate and, and merge it and, and, and improve it and make changes to it are the backbone of this use case. They, they, they are the central part of this use case. Uh, they are fundamental. Uh, but one of the reasons to name this use case version control and collaboration was to keep it agnostic of the asset. Regardless of how important source code management is, and source code, is, source, code, source code is, which is undeniable, not only in this use case, but throughout the software development life cycle, uh, it is true that the, at the point in which software is created, which is the space that this use case covers, other assets are also important, especially in the case of GitLab, uh, because uh, the, the, one of the three top differentiators listed in the resource page in the handbook of this use case um, is unique to uh, GitLab. And it's the fact that it can manage other types of assets. Think of design management. Uh, you are able to uh, upload designs to your issues and work at least in the late stages as of now or, and collaborate on it, uh, on those types of assets. Uh, which is something that other uh, version control and collaboration tools, or in fact, source code management tools do not manage well. Uh, it is true, like it is listed there, that the single application, uh, that the fact that GitLab is a single application for all the uh, DevOps lifecycle, it is also a unique differentiator, but specific to this use case is the ability to manage other types of assets and support them at least uh, 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 in the late stages. So that's another reason why this use case is called version control and collaboration. So why is version control and collaboration uh, important? Well, this quote is from, the, from 1980 and it's still valid. Um, at, the, at the stage in which software is created, change is constantly happening. Uh, the problem that companies are the problems that companies are facing in this in this stage of the of the of the cycle are, are multiple. One is that change is constant. It co constant. It comes from many places. It comes from uh, um, for many, it happens for many reasons, and it can generate 
um, um, if, if, if not properly managed, it can generate a confusion of versions. Uh, also, again, these changes can be proposed by different teams that might be siloed, that might not be explaining the reasons why those changes are proposed, what is the goal for that, and how they should be articulated and uh, merged. And that can be eventually, that can become eventually a problem because the communication between those groups or even inside of the, those teams is, is, is broken. Uh, there's loss of information, there's lack of context, etc. Uh, there's not a culture of, of, of short toes and uh, experimentation and small batch uh, integration. And there's actually uh, cultures of finger pointing and blame. So the end result of the problems just expressed right now in the previous slide is Poor code quality, so eventually integrations or changes proposed that are integrated into the code line, into the main code base, are uh, of poor quality for several reasons. Uh, the developer experience is, is, is not, it, it's not good. Uh, eventually, uh, in the long term, um, um, for um, making it, making employee and turnover uh, high uh, among other other consequences uh, the release cycle the integration cycle which is the the specific uh area that this use case covers is uh is pretty long so the velocity uh, is not something that uh, uh people with this problems companies with these problems uh excel at and eventually they lose the opportunity to become a a, a, a a significant player and uh, take advantage of destruction and a fast go to market uh, with the with the software IP. Um, so, so at the foundation of DevOps is proper version control and collaboration. Uh, the solution to these problems comes from the ability to uh, enable cross functional teams to work together, not only between teams, but also among team members to allow them to iterate fast in small batches and have the ability to collaborate to the detail of the line of code, of the pixel in the case of the design, and the ability to communicate those changes uh, in an orderly fashion and with enough automation to um, automate boring processes and enough automation to ping with notifications uh, and request uh, human attention and brain cycles to the specific problems that require that. Um, and eventually the, the companies that um, adopt these, um, these um, best practices and have the tools that enable them uh, will, in, will make changes to the code base and to their IP uh, incrementally, uh, which will allow them that in case of making a mistake, they can roll back easily. They can automate workflows as soon as the workflow is, has been done a few times and uh, uh, some parts can be automated. It is easy to understand which parts uh, can, be, can be subject to that, which eventually will make uh, integrations uh, uh, and releases faster. And there's a cross team uh, visibility of how things work, of the context of the reasons for the proposed changes, the consequences of those and how teams internally work. So that visibility uh, allows uh, groups to learn about best practices uh, elsewhere and clear cases of inner sourcing and so on. So that's it. Thank you.